Well, hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, and this video is a little different than usual. I recently lost a friend of mine, actually just a week ago, just over a week ago, and I decided to go to his favorite local park and do my Bible journey. I just miss this brother in Christ so much, and he loved coming here, so I thought this would be honoring to him to share his little park with you. And I turned to the trees that are in my book, and there's a bunch of different trees. There's triangle trees, which I'm going to be doing here. There's little cartoon trees. There's these little guys I call popsicle trees. And then a blob tree. I, I don't even want to call it that, a blob. It's just a blob of watercolor. And in the book, there's just a little description of how to do each one. They're pretty simple and self-explanatory. But um, in a few pages later, there is a sketch of the little happy singing trees. If you're interested in uh, copying that one into your Bible directly, you can do that. So I've got my colored pencils out, and you're not going to be able to see this really well, sorry. I used a really light green pencil first to just draw the triangles. And I'm doing four trees in this particular one, and just kind of making them at different heights. So the tops of them at different heights, and the bottoms of them at different heights, and letting them overlap each other a little bit, which you'll see more as I get more color in there. But if I were to draw these outlines with a regular pencil, I could do that, but then the regular pencil line would be trapped underneath of the colored pencil. But with the green, I could just kind of go over it, and then it looks like there is no pencil line there at all. When you're all finished with something like this, you could also go around the whole edge with a black pencil or something with a black pen, but I like the idea of just having some simple shapes. John was a rather simple guy. He was an artist. He was actually an architect um, in his earlier years. That's what he studied in college. He ended up being a guy who worked in the detention facility with young people in juvenile detention. But I met him through Toastmasters, and he was such a dear, dear friend. I am just heartbroken missing him. It was a tragic accident. It wasn't a expected illness or anything. So it was very sudden, and we've been going through the planning for his memorial service. We had one at my Toastmasters Club this past week that was absolutely amazing. Everybody telling their stories of the impact that John had on their lives. And his family was able to actually come to that. And only days after his passing, they made the trip to come out because they'd heard from him so much about his love for Toastmasters, and he wanted to meet all these people that knew John. And it was a real blessing. It was an, an amazing time together. So there you go. Processing uh, our grief in a lot of different ways. And in the park that John loves so much down the street from us was just the perfect place to sit and listen to the birds and be doing my Bible journaling. Wishing there weren't planes flying overhead occasionally, which I found <laughs> interrupted the peace and quiet just a little bit. But I added some shading on my trees on just one side, doesn't matter, picking the left or right side. And then I took a black pencil and added just a heavier line on one, one side just to add that extra depth to it. And as I was making my tree trunks, I decided I wanted them on a hillside. Um, John passed on a mountainside. It was a hiking accident. So I thought having a, a hillside in here would be appropriate for <laughs> remembering him and what happened. So making a hillside and then bringing the tree trunks down to the, the ground level. You could also make them, as in the example in the book, um, in front of the hillside, make the hill behind them rather than the, the tree trunk stopping at the top of the hill, but either way works fine. And then I decided to put some mountains behind because, of course, it was on the mountain that he passed, and John was an avid hiker. I never got to go hiking with him because I am far too out of shape to go in the places where he went because he was big on snowshoeing and all kinds of things. Um, but he always had so many great pictures of all his adventures and he told lots of stories about them in his Toastmaster speeches and everything. Super, super great guy. And you might wonder why I have an envelope underneath of what I'm coloring. It's because a few pages behind that I have some stickers on the page. And I started realizing that the stickers made my paper lumpy, so you were going to see the outline of the stickers underneath. And an envelope was all I had in the park with me, so I have an envelope being my thing to block it out and make my color pencil go on a little bit more evenly. 
the thing that I wanted to put on this page, it is for um, Isaiah 55, but I decided to put the quote that's on John's Facebook, and it was on there before he passed. It's just another day in paradise. It's a great day to be alive. And John is still alive. He's alive with Jesus now in heaven. I know he stepped over instantly when it was time to go. He was not someone who was shaky at all in his faith, and I know where he is. And I take great comfort in that. And that the fact that I don't have to worry about where, where he is, I'm going to see him again. Thank you so much for spending a few minutes with me. I hope you will try some little trees in your Bible sometime, and I'll see you again next week.